Welcome to Don't Take Out Your Phone. Uh, I had a really cool chat with a guy called Adam French today, who's the founder of a protein company called Wade Protein. W-H-E-Y apostrophe D. Grass-fed whey protein. Very cool chat. Uh, we talk about how he started uh, his journey so far. They've been going for like six, seven months. Um, it's a very cool journey. Uh, we talk a lot about fitness, nutrition. He's a fellow CrossFitter. So we had a good talk and I hope you all enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Adam, thanks for joining me on the podcast. No worries. Um, this is our like fourth or fifth location. We're supposed to do CrossFit at Engine Room, where we first met. Mm-hmm. Then my house had builders. Another coffee shop too loud. So we ended up at Starbucks. Not that I want to publicise Starbucks. Yeah, it's a corporate giant. <laughs> yeah. Um, but thanks for joining me. That's all right. No worries. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. So um, what is Wade? So, in its simplest terms, because I've got about five or six different variations of what I say whey is, but it's uh, a pure, sustainably produced whey protein powder sourced from the best dairy in the world, which is hormone-free and 100% grass-fed. So we have single-serving sachets, which are portable to use, which we can talk about more in a minute, and 30 and 100-serving bags. Nice. Um, so, where's, and so where are the cows from? The cows are from Cork in Southern Ireland. Nice. The reason for that is not just, I'm not Irish. A lot of people ask if I'm Irish. The reason for that is because Irish dairy is the best in the world. And so they're outside for about 80% of the year. If you compare that to somewhere, say the, the UK, so British cows are outside for about 50% of the year. It's all weather dependent. So Irish grass is, the rich, is rich, it grows quickly. The right. soil is really good for, for grass growing conditions. Um, it's actually sunnier, it rains more. So basically yeah, what this yeah. means is you're giving these cows you know, free range of, of, of lush grass. Beautiful. So the great thing about that is it creates a really rich um, dairy product. Yeah. So you hear about Irish milk, Irish butter being very rich, good flavour. What it also means is that the, the healthy fats, the amino acids that are in the whey, in the, in the milk, are higher than they are elsewhere. So if you compare that to other, say, protein providers um, that produce dairy from grain-fed cows, um, our dairy has five times more CLA, which is a, an amino acid, um, effectively more healthy if we. So. And do m- are most cows fed with grain or grass-fed? It's, it, it, it varies. Actually, grass-fed is actually cheaper because, and it's more sustainable because, so the, the dairy farms that we work with, we have about 1,300 dairy farms in Ireland in about a 30 to 40 mile radius. They're all quite small. Most of them are family run. I've been able to visit them a few times. Okay. Uh, and they pass down from generation to generation. Um, but because the grass grows, the cows eat it. The grass grows, the cows eat it. Yeah. It's very sustainable. So they don't use hormones to grow the grass. Whereas the cows in, say for example, they're indoor fed, have to be fed on grains. Um, which have hormones in and to grow them quicker, for example. Yeah. Um, but no, Irish dairy is, is some of the best, they're not the best. Expensive? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So when I started the brand, I didn't want to, I didn't think about cost. I thought, okay, what's the best product out there to give to people? And that's where I started. So it took me okay. about six months trying to find this product, this, where the best dairy is from in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and it's quite important that we tell people that. So a lot of the other brands, it, it amazes me with something like dairy in general. You don't, you not, you don't know where it's from. So whereas, you know, if you used to buy eggs, you buy free range eggs. If you buy free range chicken, but with dairy, there's not that same stamp of approval. So no. what we're campaigning to do, along with the dairy farmers, is to a thing called Pasture Promise, which basically says if they're outside for longer than 50% of the year, they get this stamp saying, basically, free range dairy. Why um, is being out 50% of the year good? Why? Yeah, is that because, like the... Yeah, yeah, so that's... Actually, ours are outside for 80% of the year. Yeah. Basically, you know, if they're inside, they have the free range of the grass, they're under high stress. Whereas they're outside, they're just roaming on the ground, the grass for... And the only reason that they actually the cows aren't out for longer is because of the weather. And they come in for the, the coldest two months of the year. So, um, oh, effectively, the longer they're outside, the better. Yeah. Um, 
And there's a reason why the other brands don't tell that because they source their dairy from indoor grain fed cows. True. And it, it shines through on the product. So if you look at their macronutrients, it's a lot worse than, there's than quite, us. There's quite a good trend now for more people getting their milk from milkers. Yeah, exactly that. We yeah. just started getting our milk from milkers. Mm. It's quite mm. interesting because if, it if it was like invented now, the milkman, yeah. you've got like um, locally produced yeah. uh, milkman in glass bottles mm. uh, delivering it in electric. Floats. Electric flow. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's funny that it's a really old school. It? No, it is. It's like plastic. Yeah. And like all that kind of there's, stuff. There's a, if you look at dairy in general, it, over the last 10 years, I think there's half the number of dairy farmers there were 10, 15 years ago. I come from Dorset, North Dorset, and you know, I know a lot of friends I went to school with have, have family run dairy farms. I've had to close because the price of milk is just so cheap now. So, has it, so the price has gone down over the price has gone years. down yeah because the supermarkets are pushing down price yeah which is weird because i think everyone would be happy to spend an extra two pence well we pint. spend we spend uh, i think it's 20p more to have it delivered yeah yeah um, no it's by it's great actually because the world that we're in now is people want to know where their product is from you know what condition you know, the, their animals are in that they're, they're buying from them, whether it's cows or whether it's whether it's something else. So, and actually, that that suits our brand really well because that's what we're giving people. Yeah. Um, we have a, a a thing called a farm to fork initiative. So every batch of whey that we produce, we can source it back to the actual individual dairy farmer okay. that produced that. It's not quite as simple as you plug a number online, but yeah. um, we know for a fact that our current batch of whey um, is produced by a farmer called Glen. So no other brand can do that because right. you know, they, they, they don't want people to know where they get it from. Which, yeah. So as the world evolves, people are going to want to know what, where they're buying their product from. You know, is it British meat? Is it British dairy? Is it Irish? Those sorts of things, which is, which is great. And but it'll be interesting though, because I still think um, people are quite price sensitive. Yes, they are, yeah. And so if you <laughs> so have a you know, locally produced I know, beef, mm. which is a lot more expensive than who knows where it comes from? Yeah. Like Sainsbury's yeah. or something. It's trying to find that right market fit. So in my market, it's, it's such a disparity between sort of the my proteins out there that charge sort of 10, 12 pounds a kilo to our product, which is equivalent of you know 30 to 35 pounds. So it's because we're looking to target people that care about where their product's from, that's sourced in the right way, excuse me the pun, yeah. and there's a lot of way puns out there. Um, so we, you know, it's not a one size fits all in the same way that people would rather buy, like you were just saying, cheaper chicken or more expensive chicken. Yeah. So yeah. there isn't a one size fits all, but um, there are people out there that want to, especially nowadays, they want to know where their yeah, products are from. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and which they should do, it's, it's the right they have. Yeah, yeah. Why did you start the business? A couple of reasons. The original reason was because um, I worked in the city in marketing. Um, and I would go to the gym at lunch times. And there isn't an easy way to take a whey powder on the go. It's, it just, it baffled me that it's such a big market that's worth billions of pounds globally. But trying to take a powder on the go is, was so complicated. So I either had a Tupperware, which I'd have to decanter every few days. So I'd be at my desk, powder everywhere. Or I'd have to put the, the powder in my shaker or in a little cup in my shaker. And it just really confused me that there wasn't an easier portable way of taking <coughs> whey protein on the go. So um, I did a prototype of this single serving sachet that's you know, thinner, that it fits in a shaker, opens easily, it's portable. Uh, trialed that and actually had, you know, for myself and a lot of my friends loved it. So right. I thought, okay, well I can create a business out of this. Yeah. Um, and you always wanted to do a business? 100%, yeah. I, I've always, I've, I did business at uni. Um, you had your own business at uni? No, I did business, studies. yeah, I did marketing and sport at uni actually. Okay. So, which is weird now because I'm in marketing and okay. sport and nutrition. Um, I, you know, when I was 16, I ran my own eBay business, selling Havianas, which I'm wearing right now, <laughs> uh, importing them from Brazil and reselling. So I've always wanted to have my own business, but I, I'm 30 now, and I kind of got caught in the, not the corporate lifestyle, but moving to London, enjoying the, the, the yeah. perks that come with a business and you know, weekends away. So where were you at uni? I was at Brunel University. Fine. In so West you, London, oh, yeah. Okay, so you came to, to London for uni. Yeah, I had to get out of the West Country. Yeah, I was like, right. I have to get away. Uh, I came originally for sport because uh, Brunel was, was top two, three unis for sport. And then as I developed, I, I felt that business was a was more suited for me. Yeah. Um, so I sort of changed in the second and third year to business, and, and then you got were sportsman as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Not, not an elite level, nowhere near elite level. So my main sports are football, um, which I still play three times a week now. Nice. And I come from sort of an athletics background. So okay. We're middle track. long, yeah, track. So middle long distance running. I started off a sprinter as I was younger, and then just got longer and longer and longer. And now I'm coming back. So what was um, your longest? So you know, half marathons. Um, yeah. Probably when I was young. Competitively, yeah. yeah. So nice. competitively, I would probably be 5K. Was I did yeah. a lot of that when I was younger, right. um, back in the West Country. So um, it's actually quite a hard distance because it's quite quick. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Uh, so it's, it was it was good fun, but. As I've sort of grown older, I've gone to the gym more, just trying to have a healthy balance of doing, probably now I would say I would gym two, three times a week, maybe four times, and then football um, the rest of the time. But Great. 11 aside or five aside? 11 aside, yeah. Well, both actually. I play 11 aside on Saturdays, and I play six aside on Thursdays. Nice. So yeah, um, I've always start. wanted to be a professional sportsman, but kind yeah, of been, I've been a, yeah, well, there you go. It's the new, it's the new 20, but uh, it's, I was a sort of, sort of a, a bridesmaid, as it were. I was never quite good enough. You wanted, did you want to be a pro, a pro athlete? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you yeah. wanted to be a pro athlete. Yeah, exactly right. Um, yeah. But now, like now with with Wade, and we can talk about this more in a minute. Yeah. We're actually now working with pro athletes. So, oh, um, which sports? So we were the sole provider for whey protein for Wimbledon tennis this year. Amazing. So um, we replaced Optimum Nutrition, which is the biggest whey brand ever, based on the purely on the quality of our whey. So we were in the players' cafe, so they would finish the games, they would go to the cafe, they'd eat, and in, within the cafe was a whey protein shake. Brilliant. Um, and that was made with, with whey. So awesome. in our first six months, it's, I was really impressed, yeah. I was really get, happy. How did you get involved with They that? contacted me, actually. Amazing. Because um, we, we test, our product is tested with Inform Sport. So with here with? With Inform Sport. Right, yeah. So basically, uh, it's a, a certification where if you're an elite athlete, you will drugs tested quite a lot. So Informed Sport basically takes a product and batch tests it for banned substances. Um, so when we produce our whey, we send it to Informed Sport, they test it random batches to check that it's secure and safe, and then they give us our certification to say that is safe. Um, what that means is that we can now start working with pro athletes. So Wimbledon wouldn't have even looked at us if we didn't have Informed Sport. Right. Because, you know, if you were a professional footballer or an athlete, if you get banned, that's your livelihood. Yeah, yeah. Actually, whey protein is very safe, but it still has to have this stamp of approval on it, um, which costs us a lot of money when we're starting up. But actually, it's been a godsend because we can now work with, you know, we're, we're, we're stocked in BXR London, which is Anthony Joshua's gym. Oh, nice. Um, so he can't, uh, in Baker Street. Baker Street, yeah, yeah. So he can't, they can't be affiliated with a brand that's not safe. So, and actually when we're pitching to, to, to retail and to gyms, they know that our product is safe for their, for their members, for their consumers, um, which is it's kind of a, a good thing for That's them amazing. really. So did you have to, so you presumably source the factory in the UK or? Yeah, so our, our way is obviously from Ireland yeah. and then we manufacture it in, in Chester in, in, in the UK. Right, and they're certified? They are certified, so it's, you have to have a, so our manufacturers has to be certified, right. our, our manufacturer, our sachets has to be manufactured, certified right. so the whole chain has to be so it's actually finds it quite hard finding that chain of, of reactions. Do they not make anything no else in the no area? no so there's certain factories that a lot of them especially with sachets will create medicines yeah um into packaging so even then it's quite a it's you know these are drugs that are safe to use for medicinal purposes but if that gets contaminated with my product then it's not safe so yeah, yeah. it's you know the clean rooms they have in these factories is amazing um, <laughs> because it obviously has to be clean of everything they have food products in there they have nuts for some people in there you know that they oh, need yeah, to make sure that they're all 100% clean it's actually really interesting when you see all of it yeah. um, so I actually just have the finished product so I've, I've worked with the manufacturers to create Actually, them. Yeah. They produce it, manufacture it, and then send me the finished product. And you guys market? I market, yeah. So um, there's been a few a few cases recently where people have taken tainted supplements or something mm. like that, got banned, and then exactly that. Them. I mean, if you look at obviously Russia, <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's a tricky one because a lot of some athletes will blame their coach um, and say that I was told to take this, um, but if it's got that informed sport approval on it, you know it's safe. Yeah. So as a nutritionist will work and recommend to an athlete, tennis players, for example, they'll say, look, this is the recommended diet, these are the recommended supplements, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. 
but you need to make sure you're being safe. Yeah, yeah. I know we've been working with sort of rugby league players and they get tested about once a week at the moment, randomly. Yeah, yeah so they, I've had a few players come to me and say, look, is this safe? Can I see certificates? And the armed forces as well. So we, we work with a lot of um, people in a, an army barracks in Cyprus. Oh, nice. We sponsored a half marathon over there. Amazing. And they love the product because it's sachets. Yeah. Really, really convenient for them. Um, but they also need to make sure that it's safe because, again, that's their, their livelihood. They need to... So, so the army, they drug tested? They are, yeah. I yeah, yeah then they are. So they need to... If you want to pitch to army barracks or work with people in the army, they won't touch a product unless it's informed sport tested. And it's quite important for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those two markers are actually quite big for us. All because we've got that testing, which I never would have so thought about investment. at the time. Yeah, yeah. So the, the gym that I worked with said, look, go out and get it, which I did. Um, cost, it's not too expensive, but it is quite an upfront cost. Yeah, but yeah. it's so worth it because actually, I also know that it's safe. Because even though I sourced the way and I know where it's sourced, you know, you, you still get lost in, in the pipeline. So yeah. it's nice to know that it's, it's clean. Yeah, and it's good for everyone else as well. And it, it amazes me that you see products on the shelf, such as sports supplements now that aren't tested because you could be taking anything. Well, to be honest, I mean, most people don't know. No, they don't. I have no, I have no idea. I no. have no idea. No, exactly that. And it's, it should all be safe, really. But it's, it, not every product can be tested. Yeah. It doesn't need to be. But um, a lot of people don't even know what, where whey is from. A lot of people don't realize it's from dairy, <laughs> for example, which yeah. is fine, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, as part of our brand, we, we want to educate a lot of people. And so your whey, because obviously a lot of people have lactose intolerance and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So your whey is hydrolyzed. It is, yeah. What does so, that mean? So there's three types of whey. They all come from milk, and it's basically what you do with them once you, you create the whey. So just very quickly, you take, say, a pint of milk, for example. What they'll do in the factory is they'll they take out the curds, which takes, creates the cheese. Think of Little Miss Muffet, curds and yeah, whey. Yeah. The liquid that's left over is the whey. So if you ever have yogurt, there's liquid on top. That's whey, liquid whey. Effectively, what you can do, there's three stages. So you, you can dry that. So take the water out and dry it. That creates a, a powder. That's whey concentrate. So that's the most common type of whey protein out there at the moment. Um, so it's cheaper to produce because it's just basically dried liquid whey. But it has all of the fat and all of the sugar that you would have from the milk, ex ex excess the cheese, for example. So that is about six to eight percent lactose, lactose, sorry. So it's a great product and it has, does the same benefits as protein, for example, but a lot of people don't get on well with concentrate because yeah. it doesn't sit well on their stomach. A lot of people aren't, you know, in theory, lactose intolerant, but they don't sit well with lactose. Yeah, yeah. So the second type of whey is whey isolate, which is again, quite popular. But all they do is microfilter. they basically push it for a filter to remove a lot of the, the fat and the sugar. Okay. So it's about 90% protein content. A concentrate is about 70 to 80%. Yeah. So it's a more of a purer whey, um, has a lot less fat and sugar in it. And then the third and final type of whey protein, um, all from the same source of milk, is whey hydroisolate or hydrolyzed whey, which is what we produce. And the difference between our whey and say isolate is, we add foods enzymes to it which effectively break down the amino acids. All that means is it's partially broken down and partially, so when you drink it, it gets to your blood a lot quicker. Okay. It's 0.8% lactose as opposed to 8%. Yeah. So it's a lot better on your stomach. So it, it, a lot of the brands out there will say it's lactose free, which most lactose people, people that are lactose intolerant well, can take it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I refuse to do that because I think if, if someone's really sensitive to lactose, they will take it and probably not get on with it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's worth a try. It, people are different, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, what it means is it when you when you drink it, it goes to your blood quicker. So effectively, what that means is it's you start your recovery sooner. So okay. you, you effectively recover quicker. Yeah. It was originally designed for athletes that train twice a day that need to recover really quickly. Um, straight after their workout. Straight after the workout, start the recovery process. Yeah. It, it doesn't sit, it sits well on your stomach, so you don't get the stomach upset that you might get from concentrate. And so a lot of people will try whey protein and say, I don't like it. But actually, if you try a hydrolyzed product, it'd be a lot easier on your stomach. Um, so, yeah, and actually, Great. in the past, hydrolyzed, hydrolyzed whey has, has, has had quite a bad rep because it doesn't taste very nice. But what we've done is we've worked with you know, flavoring experts, and actually, our whey, all the, all the taste tests we've done suggest that our whey tastes nicer than a whey concentrate. Yeah. And that's because it comes from a good dairy source. So yeah. what we've created is, a, is the purest form of whey, so the pure protein. Our servings, are, our servings have 20 grams of protein, 
0.2 grams of sugar, so it's 0.4 grams of carbs. So it's yeah. basically pure protein Brilliant. that just goes straight to your blood, and it tastes really nice as well. Yeah. Um, so you've got two flavors. We've got two flavors. We just reached a third. So nice. we've got strawberries and cream, which Wimbledon loved, obviously. Yeah. I didn't even realize at the time I the huh? brand that it's, it's it was perfect Wimbledon. Yeah. Uh, chocolate, and we've just launch a new flavor in inverted commas which is basically unflavored okay. so it's not got any you know f flavorings in it at all it's basically 100 percent whey a hydrolyzed whey and sunflower lecithin to make it mix okay. so a lot of people when we we were testing the brand and we had the original two flavors they were asking us do you do like a a completely raw version that we because a lot of people bake with the product so oh, you can we bake with it as well yeah you can bake with it okay. so a lot of people the common uses are straight after the gym with either you know, water, milk, whatever you want to take it. Uh, in your porridge is really, really good. A lot of people don't have enough protein for breakfast. Yeah, they'll have like, uh, oats are great. Um, they'll have a coffee and oats or a coffee and a, on, on, they'll grab a croissant on the go and there's no protein in your diet. Yeah. Where actually in the morning, you, your body is craving protein because you haven't had it for 12 hours. Um, so it's really good just to pour into your, your oats to give you 20 grams of protein. Right. And then that little bit of extra flavor. Yeah. Um, Unless but, you go for the unflavored. Unless you go for the unflavored. But a lot of people are making smoothies at home where they'll use fresh fruit, so strawberries or banana. Yeah. They don't necessarily need the flavoring from yeah. the, the whey powder. So actually they'd rather just have an unflavored yeah. version. Yeah. People make protein bars, protein balls. Yeah. And we've got a few recipes on our site for that. Nice. Um, so, I mean, the new product is about 92% protein quantity, quality. Really? So it's, it is yeah. crazy high. And, and it's sugar. Literally zero sugar, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, even though the R1 has zero sugar anyway, but um, it's surprising me because it doesn't actually taste of anything. So as a single serve on the go, you think probably not right, but actually, it just, just tastes of whatever you're mixing. Try the chocolate. I have to try that one. Yeah, it's we're just we're just manufacturing it now actually because we've got a new batch coming out. Um, What's the lead times? How long does it take to manufacture? Quite a long time actually. So from dairy farm to sachet can be up to nine to twelve weeks. Okay. But it, it, it lasts a long time. So, so the batch that you... Yeah, so the, the, the shelf life of our product is between 12 and 18 months. Um, okay. Yeah. So, you know, for the unflavored version, it's even longer. So it's almost nearly two years. Great. Um, but, which is great, because it can sit on a shelf yeah. for quite a long time. So for all of these different things to think about, yeah. have you found like starting a business, running it? Yeah. You've obviously not done manufacturing before. So no. Getting it's, used to that supply it's, chain. It's such a learning curve. So I started the business when I was working in marketing on the side, sourcing, like the, the, trying to find a manufacturer that would produce a bespoke sachet size was the hardest thing, because they all do off-the-shelf versions, right? So I, I designed this sachet size for a reason, so it's easier to use, op easier to open. Yeah. But actually, <laughs> they were like, great, well, we can't do it for those, for your volume. You can, you can order a million and we can buy you a machine bit. And <laughs> right. So you learn loads of different things. I refuse to, you can also, you can source it from something like China, it's a lot cheaper, but I wanted to keep as much of it as close to home as possible. Okay. I just wanted to, I wanted to visit the, the manufacturers. I wanted to know these people. So I spent a long time visiting manufacturers um, seeing their processes, and then she found this, these guys in, in Chester, they're called Flex Packaging Services, and they're, they're amazing, I love them, because um, they're, they're friendly, they're, they're, they, you speak to them, you can have a conversation yeah. with them, and they don't try and rip you off, it's a very much, uh, so I've always wanted to, when I was working in marketing, I was sort of an agency side, so I sat in the middle, so I'd have, I would be buying something off a supplier, whether it was media space or data, yeah. and I was effectively selling it to a client, so I sat in the middle, and I, you know, we'd be working with clients, and I'm not going to name any names. These big corporate clients that are just horrible people, and they just they to what to do business to, with. to do business with, yeah. and um, you know they would just they'd just be overbearing. And just, it's just a nightmare. So I always wanted to do business with people that I got on well with. Yeah. And I've had a couple of instances where I have dealt with manufacturers that you know they actually could work with me, and it was slightly cheaper, but they just just wanted my money. So working with a manufacturer that I get on well. No, they just were just interested in money rather than trying to build my brand. I see, I see. Yeah. Um, so that was quite an important thing for me to try and enjoy my life a bit more and just enjoy business. Definitely. It's, a, it's just the work people that I get on my with. But that was a learning curve because I've never done manufacturing before. So, and branding took a long time as well. So, so I, the right. Yeah, so it took me, I worked with a small agency. I went through various iterations of names, concepts, because I, I didn't want to have a brand that was the same as everyone else. 
So our brand is very clean. It's very gender neutral. Yeah. It's lots of white. It's basically white in text. There's no. It's not an image of a topless guy with a dumbbell in his hand. Yeah. And that's for a reason because I think a lot of the way brands out there scared away females and they shouldn't do. That's true. So yeah. probably we probably got a 60-40 split female to male. And what people who buy your product? Yeah. And that's just because women aren't frightened to pick it up, but men are also happy to have the same product as well. So yeah. it's it's the product quality that shines through rather than the, the marketing. How many names did you go through? I would say probably about 100. Really? Yeah. We, Crazy. Uh, some of the original ones, I can't even remember what they were now, but it just, it, it took so long and I was, I was again so fixated on the name for so long and actually didn't mean that much in the, in the end. Yeah. So we picked quite a simple name. It um, works well. It works well. It does work well, yeah. It's going to be quite tricky if we ever try and move down out of way in the future, which we probably will do. So we other products. Yeah, if we, were to, if we were to launch a vegan brand in the future or another brand, it's, it way is obviously, it is what it you says on the tin. You have to think of an overarching... Exactly, yeah, which we're doing at the moment. Yeah, oh, but uh, okay. if we were to launch a pea protein, it'd have to be called like peed or something, which we can't do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll think of that. But the branding took a long time, but it's quite important. And we've had a lot of compliments on our branding. Yeah. Um, and now we're pushing to retail. It, it sits, it, sh- it sort of stands out on the shelves. Yeah. Because it's um, a very um, crowded marketplace. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. That's probably the, the biggest, not worry, but the biggest problem I've had to overcome is, is trying to get my message across in a crowded marketplace. But companies that have been out there for 15 years that have got much bigger budgets that are effectively you know, paying to get customers on board by pushing influencers out there and throwing big events and, yeah. and sponsoring events um, and, you know, and offering a cheaper cost for a product that of poorer quality. There's so many things that are different about our brand. The fact that we're honest about where we get away from, the quality of our product. Quality is, is quite a subjective word. Highest quality, everyone says that. Yeah. But ours actually is, you know, our BCAA content, which is the branch chain amino acids, is higher than any other way on the market. Do you um, think consumers care about that? Or do they look at it? I think it's, this is the thing, it's hard. So I never wanted to, um, when I was branding my product, I didn't want to call it a diet way. I didn't want to call it a lean way. So the biggest diet way, the most popular diet way on the market, I'm not going to name names, but it's called diet way, brand in front of it. Yeah. It has about 30% more calories than our product. So really? ours is a lot, it's a lot better for you if you're on a diet or if you're trying to lose weight. But I, I don't want to falsely market and say diet. Um, we changed the, the wording slightly on our new sachets that we've just designed that will go into retail because right. You've got two seconds for someone to pick up your sachet yeah, yeah. and say, "Well, it's amazing. Look at diet. Yeah, you should buy it. Yeah, weight loss. It's, yeah, weight loss. It's, it's it's all marketing yeah. marketing baloney. It's, yeah. it's 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 bad really because it's deceiving the customer. The protein is for recovery. Yeah. Um, the protein is a macronutrient. Will increase your metabolism because it requires more energy to break down. So in that aspect, it, it will increase your metabolism. It does help you lose weight. Um, and if you have more protein in your diet and you replace protein with from carbohydrates then you know we'll come on to talk about diet in a minute but yeah. um it is tricky trying to think okay why take wade that's our been our biggest problem you know these the guys that have got bigger budgets are going to outspend you online in terms of paid search so it's trying to get our message and our story across which we don't do enough of and cr- creating content is what we're doing a lot more of and saying why should i take wade who is the founder you know what are you trying to achieve one of our big things is our one for one scheme so what's that for every sachet that we, someone buys on a website, we give a glass of milk to a school child oh, in poverty. Brilliant. So it's, it's, it's amazing. In the last three months alone, we've given about 6,500 glasses of milk wow. to school children in poverty. So it's, it's a really neat, I love the one for one. Is that through one. a charity? Or? Yeah, they're called B1G1, or buy one, give one. Amazing. So we cover the cost, the administration costs. We pay like an annual fee. Yeah. So for every penny that people donate effectively, goes to a cause. I think, I mean, I worked in charities and marketing for eight years and I've seen a lot of them doing it right and wrong. I think if you give someone 10 pounds, just generally, it's always hard to see where that 10 pounds goes. Whereas look at Tom, the model that Tom's created, Tom's shoes, this one for one is really, yes, it's yeah. quite easy. So for every time someone buys a sachet, we give a glass of milk. For you know, a serving, so if they buy a 30 serving bag, that's 30 glasses of milk. It's quite simple and it's, it makes a difference. So it costs, you know, it, we're not doing it to make money, more money. 
you know, it's a lot of brands out there, are, we give 1% of our profits or 10% of our profits yeah. or a net profit. What happens if you don't make a profit or you reinvest your money? True. Whereas ours, whether we make a profit or not, we're giving to charity. Yeah. So yeah. as we grow as a brand, we, we are making, we've already made a massive impact. No, so to get that, 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 yeah. that counter higher and higher, to get yeah. to the million mark would be incredible. Um, You'll get there? We'll get there eventually, yeah. So, and so have, you, have you found then that like, the way you are trying to market mm. is different to... Yes, has it changed yeah. a lot, do you think? Yeah, so the way we market compared to our competitors or just generally... Compared to competitors or maybe just, you know, you're in a marketing agency. Yeah. So have you seen over the last, let's say, 10 years... Yeah, massively. ...that you had to change the way that you've done things? Yeah, do things? I mean, the actual marketing that I used to do was completely different to what I'm doing now. So the only concepts that I can drag over is, the, is sort of the general business understanding. So the message that you put across. I worked in data marketing. We used to do a lot of you know, direct mail, inserts into magazines. The, the market I'm in mean, now doesn't do that at all. It, the market that is now is Instagram influencers are massive. Yeah. Whether they know what they're talking about or whether they, they don't know what they're talking about. These are the, the new famous people. Uh, brand it's like in, um, Kylie Jenner. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Billionaire. Self-made as well, Self-made yeah. billionaire. Because they did a video. The quickest, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lipstick, I think it was, was the biggest brand. Yeah. And that made like $19 million in one day. Amazing. And, it, and it's, they obviously, the Kardashians are uh, an extreme example. There was an example, I think it was one of the Kardashians, that they put a post up about a men's face moisturiser. Right. And the next day, that product was sold out in every single store in the UK. Wow. By women buying it. Because they, know, yeah. that's how influential they are. And if you think about it, like sports sponsorship has been around for I think, decades. Yeah. It's not a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. But with, with Instagram, more so than... And there's, there's Twitter, there's Snapchat, there's the other ones. But Instagram is the big one. It's, it's trying to leverage these people yes. in yeah. the best way possible. Um, and fortunately, again, in that market, it can be highest bidder wins. So, you know, they're expensive. Work, they're expensive to work yeah. with. And if I'm working with, competing with a brand for a certain person, and I don't, you know... I don't pay them as much as the other person does. It's the highest bit of wins. Yeah, yeah. So what I've had to do to start with is to create relationships with each individual person. Okay. I go and meet them. I go and say, look, why these do you sports, want... To... These are sportsmen and women. Yeah, yeah. and trainers. and yeah. Personal trainers are great because they recommend. Yeah. They have a lot of influence. Yeah. A lot of people look to their trainers Advocates to recommend. Brand. Yeah. And it's not about someone... I don't want to work with someone that's just putting up a topless picture every day of them in the gym. I want to work with people that are honest about get healthy. Yeah. Um, and change your lifestyle. So that's quite a tricky one. Um, but marketing is, is, I think we're at the peak of the, the polarised Instagramness at the moment. I think, think it will change. I think it will. You don't think it's just started? No, I, I think we're at the peak of it. I, don't, I think it will be at the peak for a while. But I, I don't know where the market will move in, in the future. I wish I did. But I think you know, just TV reach. is definitely, like, from a TV point of view, I think it's just dead. TV's gone now. TV's yeah. gone. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, like I mean, YouTube is yeah, it's really on demand. Thing. TV is is yeah. the new. Th People don't watch adverts anymore on TV. They skip. No. Yeah. I mean, all the TV programs have on demand now, and yeah. video on demand is massive. So yeah. if you basically, if you're in a situation where you can click through to something, that's the where you're going to get your conversions. Yeah. I mean, brand out outdoor you know, billboards is all about the subconscious, and I think there's always still a place for that. Um, but I think what brands constantly want to do, especially startups, is they want to get return on their investment straight away. Yeah. And that's what's really hard it's because hard. Hard. you can't do loads of branding at the front at the start, even though you want to... If you look at someone like um, Brewdog, who, you know, I don't know how old Brewdog are now, but they're worth over a billion dollars It's probably now. like 12, I think they were, yeah, about 12, 13 years probably. So they, they started their brand, market, their, market, their marketing budget was zero. They would just do crazy PR stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So look, you know, that's what we'll be looking to do in the future is to how can we leverage PR in a way that will get across our message that we are cleaner, we work with charity, that our, our product is, is what it says on the tin. Um, and it's basically content, content, yeah. content, content. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that Instagram is a daily feed. Yeah. Now people will go on Instagram first. So way you back they when, wake up. yeah, way back when they were... Well, when they, when they hear about a brand, they used to go to the Yellow Pages back in the day. Like, yeah. And then they used to go to probably the last five or ten years. Okay, I've heard about Wade straight on the website, which you kind of still do now. But more and more so now, the first thing they'll do is they'll go to their Instagram page. 
That's what a lot of people are doing. So you've got to make sure that page is, is, yeah. is hot. You know, it's, the content is good. So you're posting every day? Posting every day. Do you do it or you've got someone I else? do it, yeah. yeah. So I'm working, I'm trying to work with a, a new photographer now because I've done it, but quite poorly probably, but you have to have that content has to be on point. Yeah. yeah. What amazes me about these, the Instagrammers that you see, you know, they're perfectly, the hair is perfectly Manicured cool. They have a like... photographer following them around wherever they go. Yeah. So they're on holiday, um, they've got a photographer with them. You don't, you don't think about it consciously when you look at the picture of them no, on holiday no. like with their perfect hair and they've got a photographer that will follow them around. That's their full-time job. It's amazing, really. So is that your next employee? Well, maybe, yeah. I think <laughs> photography is something that you know, I'm not necessarily that good at, but I need some... They're not going to follow me on holiday. <laughs> but they need, you, know, you need to film every part of your brand. Yeah. People want to know. They want to hear the stories. We've got a great story to tell. We need to push that more. Yeah. So, and that's all free. So, yeah. And as people, the more and more people we get on board... You know, we can spread our story. Our marketing budget becomes zero because we've got a lot of repeat business because we've got a good tasting quality product and people buy into our, what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, but we need to be pushing that more. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting, but... That's very cool stuff. Content is definitely... You need to have your content on point. Yeah. Like, you, like, you know, blogging constantly yeah. about what you believe in. And again, that's what the BrewDog guys did really well. Yeah. They've done amazingly. Yeah, it was great because yeah. they, they went after the... The, the poor quality beers out there and they wanted to yeah. create a craft beer and they've almost created craft beer in the UK yeah um, and then they did crowdfunding I think as well they do their own they do equity for punks which yeah, is a really smart way of crowdfunding because they use their own customers to crowdfund yeah. so it's really smart so their customers who take their, their who drink their beer drink in their pubs become investors in their company but as an investor in their company they get like 20% off or whatever it is so they don't really want to go somewhere else because they're investing in this company. Yeah. They want to tell their friends because they're investing in this company. It's such a good cycle. It's great. It's great. I will, we will be looked to do that further down the line because yeah. we want to have advocates for our brand. And the stronger the advocates are, the more they'll talk about your brand. Well, I've um, done that. I, I bought a, a bunch, a few things in different companies mm. on crowdfunding. Mm. I've done like a Vivo Barefoot. Yeah, yeah, I know those guys. Shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so whoever I speak to now, I'm like, hey, you've got to buy them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Because like, you know, I've got a little bit of... <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, but that's the subconscious. And I think you wouldn't yeah. probably... Some people do it for money. And crowdfunding is great. Um, if, I think we'll definitely look to crowdfund. It's an expensive way to raise cash, but then you yeah. get the marketing benefit. Yeah, I mean, there's, 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 there's sites like Kickstarter where actually you don't give away any equity. It's hard to engage with people because your product's got to be really, really good for people to want to yeah. order it now, pay for it now, and then not get it for six months potentially. Yeah. But if you've got a really neat product, I mean, Kickstarter's probably more for design products where yeah. they like the then concept. Then there's like, there's uh, Crowdcube, Cedars. Yeah. They're the two biggest ones. And, yeah. you know, I think on Crowdcube, I think, well, Cedars maybe, I mean, the minimum is sort of, we're talking 50,000, I think, on one of some of them. To raise. Yeah. It's, it's, but... You're also getting these customers that come on board that are, that are, are in your... Fiercely loyal. You're, you're, you're buying customers almost that are investing in your brand, which I love. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I would never go out and get investment from, an, uh, from angel investors. Why not? Because they're just, they're just obsessed with money, I think, and making a profit. And I understand that. So I used to work at my old marketing agency. Um, we were a small private company family run feel everyone sort of loved working there it was it was, it was a very close-knit people yeah and then they sold to a, a plc and there was just a shift right okay, yeah. where it wasn't about doing a good having a good product creating a good service it shifted making money yeah. and when you think about money too much if i was concentrating on making a profit all of the time i wouldn't be working with charity i'd be buying a cheaper way yeah you know i'd yeah. be push you'd be making shortcuts and it's about for me it's about creating a really good product that's the best for the consumer rather than just concentrating on the bottom line all of the time. You obviously have to have an eye on the, on the bottom line because yeah. otherwise if I didn't, then I wouldn't have a product because it would go out of business. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for me at the moment, um, I would much rather go down the route of equity crowdfunding. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I, I, we could be talking in a year's time. And I've got to see and do you have any like mentors? Any I, like kind of business people or? I don't really know. So I... Um, you hear about this a lot, actually, where yes, people... Yeah. And I've, I've kind of like, well, where do you find these people? And I've, <laughs> I've kind of reached out to a few people and met with a few people, which has been quite cool. Yeah. And I reach out to a lot of brands and ask for their advice. I'm looking to go into a certain retail at the moment, and I've, I've seen in the store, that, you know, yeah. and I've reached out to these brands. And they're actually, they love talking about business to give new advice. Yeah. I haven't got a regular mentor, but I was... I worked with Virgin Startup 
and got a Virgin Startup loan. What's, Vir what's Virgin Startup? So Virgin Startup is um, basically a, a startup loans company that Virgin sort of, it's not actually a Virgin loan, it actually is a startup with Cody like Richard Branson. Yeah, version. so he, he pushed for the government to bring out um, a, a cheaper loan system for startups to try and get more entrepreneurs on the market because it creates more jobs. I think it was around, the, I think he worked with David Cameron, he pushed him hard and hard and okay. hard. So they, the government created startup loans at EK, which is loans between £525,000, um, which you can repay early for no, for no fee. It's a cheaper interest rate than you get at a bank. Brilliant. It's Brilliant. really good, actually. And what, what Virgin do is, it's really good. So they offer a mentoring around the sides. Oh, so you apply for the, the scheme, you then go through, you work with them to apply for the loan with startups. You then, so then we, I did that. I uh, worked with a, a Virgin mentor to get my loan. I did a business plan, forecast, making sure they're secure. Did they do it with you? They did it Showed with me. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's an idiot's guide, really. They got this, this template, which is amazing. And even if you don't get it, you've, you, writing it down, your business plan, your forecast, is yeah. really therapeutic and actually good for your business. Definitely, definitely. It definitely sees where your gaps are. And then they offer you 12 months of mentoring after that. So I get okay. invited to startup funded events. And Richard Branson pops along to a few. I've not been, he's not been to one that I've been in. Um, and then you get you get given from seven to twelve months. You get given a, a mentor in your industry because they've got a network of hundreds of mentors in oh, seven. Okay. And I meet with them. I think I'll meet with them once every few months to yeah. sort of get feedback from an expert in the industry. That's really good. Contacts. Yeah. So I've, I I achieved that uh, about three months ago. Great. So I've started the originally started away the sachets, yeah. uh, personal funding, credit cards, that sort of thing. Great. Just to try and keep it all self controlled, yeah. self-funded. The fear, I call it. If I <laughs> just got someone else's money, I wouldn't have the fear. It makes yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely so you've does. Just jumped off the building. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I have to because okay. it's yeah. it's all on me. So if I don't, it yeah. makes me go out there and want to push the brand. But then I got the, then I got the loan from Virgin to push the larger bags. That, so we had the original sachets. Yeah. But people, are like, I love the sachets from the go, but I want a bigger bag. Okay, fine. So because of wet manufacturing is the minimum orders are so big, we just ordered another ton of whey in bags and sachets. So I had to get a loan to do that and to expand right, the brand. Okay, yeah. um, so in about three months time, I'll be allocated to mentor. But I would recommend them massively. Yeah. Um, people get a little bit scared of loans, I think, but you can spread it over five years. Yeah. It's actually quite cheap per month. You don't have to go for the fuller value. You can go for a 500 pound loan. Um, and you can <coughs> repay early, which is very... What's the maximum that you can borrow? £25,000. Fine, yeah. Um, which is, is, is small scale, right? It's, it's great for startups. Yeah, it's brilliant. So when I was in the room, and there was, we were all sat sort of talking about... You, you sort of going around the room and there was just you know, vegan cafes. There's so many different brands, which I love. Um, and luckily, it's just around the corner from my house. It's, it's um, oh, the, the, um, the Virgin Startup. Virgin Startup. Yeah, so it's, it's really cool. And um, it's really... A, really inspiring to be around other entrepreneurs. No, definitely, um, definitely. All with different goals and yeah. people from all corners of the world creating all, all, all sorts of brands. So it is amazing. And that's all quite, um, I think it's quite hard being on your own in a start because the yeah. motivation yeah. to succeed. And um, that's why I like going out and meeting gyms and, and doing yeah. podcasts, for example. Absolutely. No. Um, obviously, this is the best one. Uh, yes. But it's, I think you hear a lot of people say they, they start up in it's, it's a partnership. Yeah. Which is a good thing because you can bounce off each other. Um, so further down the line, obviously, I'll need to bring on more people because at the yeah. moment, it literally is just me. Yeah. Um, no, I know. I started on my own as well. Yeah. You've got to be really like mentally... You've got to be... Because it's so easy just to it. not go to work or not to. Yeah. But then th that's when the fear kicks in. Yeah. Because when I was running the business on the side for about six months, when I had my full-time job, I'd sort of do mornings, lunchtime, evenings on weight. I also had a full-time salary, so I didn't really have a fear. Yeah. Whereas now I've got the fear to kind of push it forward, yeah. which is great. So do you keep, um, do you keep like kind of strict working hours? Um, not really, no. I, I'm, I, I really don't like nine to five. So I know we were speaking before yeah. that I like to get up early. Yeah. Uh, my office doesn't open until half eight, so I'll probably go to a coffee shop for a couple hours in the morning. Then I'll go to the gym. Do you get up early? Yeah, I get up early, yeah. I, my brain only works in the morning, probably. Um, for some reason, even though I don't feel awake, my brain is working. So my eyes might be shut, but my brain's working. So I'll get, but like, you know, you've, you've achieved something by like 9am. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then I'll do, I'll go into the office by about midday. And then in the afternoons, I'll spend like, packing orders because I'm doing it all okay. myself at the moment, going to gyms, meeting people. Yeah. Um, and doing as much as possible. So the days are 
varied for sure, which is cool because it, you know it's flexible. So if I wanted to yeah. do whatever on a Friday afternoon or watch when the football was on, I could you yeah. know watch a game at three because I've done eight hours of work by that point. So and where do you fit your exercise in? All over the place. So I normally go to a couple hours in the morning work and then go to the gym, and then I've got the rest. So by nine thirty, I've normally done two three hours two hours of work and an hour in the gym. And are you doing, we spoke about, are you doing CrossFit or not anymore? I'm not doing it anymore, only because where I live in London right now, there isn't a, a close CrossFit. So I live in Notting Hill. Okay. The closest one is down to Hammersmith. Um, but actually now I'm working with a lot of CrossFit gyms. So Engine Room CrossFit, for example, yeah. I was down there this morning. Um, it's really cool getting to actually quite like visiting all these gyms because everyone's great. got their own take on it. Um, and the community is great. That's the best part of, of yeah. CrossFit. Yeah. Um, because... It's, I think it's got quite a bad rep from the outside in. In what regard? I think people, people that don't do CrossFit or haven't seen it, haven't tried it, just perceive these people as, they go to the gym five times a week, all they talk about is CrossFit, all they do is CrossFit, which yeah. is probably the case, but it's because they're passionate about it. And like I walked into End Room this morning, it's the first time I've been in there in this time of class, I've been in there in the evening before. People saying, hello, how are you? I mean, I've never been there before. And everyone sort of works together and does it. It's almost like a group work. High fives. High yeah, fives, yeah. Thing, yeah. And it's, you know, people think, see it's slightly American, but actually it's such a good way of developing a community. And it's other brand, other concepts are, are copying it now in the group workouts. But the best way to describe it is a football club has it as a team. You train together, you play together. Yeah. A CrossFit is like group fitness. So yeah. you, you train in a group. I mean, if you go to the gym on your own, motivation can be low, yeah. you'll probably just leave. Yeah. You can't leave in CrossFit, you're in there. No. It's addictive in the fact that it's so technical. People think that it's throwing weights around and it's unsafe for you, but actually if you, everyone can scale, which I love about it. So you don't have to be putting 60 kilos on a bar, you can put 20 kilos on a bar. And yeah. you, you push to your limits and you, know, you, you actually compete with yourself rather than someone else, which it's I love. It's all coached. It's all, and it's all coached, yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's the set number of people in the class for a reason. The coach will go around checking that the form is perfect. You have to go through an induction where you're taught all the, f and you scale it. And, and what's great is that because it becomes addictive in a certain way, it keeps you fit without really knowing about it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm all over it. I love it. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Because you, you also, um, you might, I, I work much harder in a group. Mm. And also I'm learning, I've learned so many new skills. Yeah. I'm trying to handstand walk this year. Oh, are you? have you done it yet? Uh, I can let a couple of little, Steps. Yeah, I'm nowhere near it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, but the other thing is, do you think it's quite elitist? So it's quite expensive CrossFit. Yeah, so I think. So you find that it's, you know, for people that, um, you know, talking about, um, you know, kids from low socioeconomic mm. backgrounds yeah. and stuff, you know, how, we, how can we get them involved? I think um, to a certain degree, I think the, the price, especially in London, and that's what put me off on a first move. So I did CrossFit in, in Bath. You know, it's cheap. It, it was like sixty quid a month, all in. Oh, great! And it's they probably they probably spent more expensive now as they move up. And but yeah. you know that's you know you got that's unlimited. If you come to London, you, some of them are like two hundred and fifty pounds a month. Yeah, that's and great. And it, yeah. it is. To, it, some of them are too expensive for what they are, and it has to be that. And London's different because of the rent you have to pay. Yeah. But I mean, there there's a it, there are some that are just. But then again, it, in London, you've also got these classes that people pay twenty pounds, twenty five pounds per class. So they pay more like three, four hundred pound a month to go to three or four well, you know, a week. Well, you know, yeah, like a yoga session, uh, it could be like 13, mm. 14, 15 quid. Yeah, I think what's interesting, I think actually Instagram is, this is the negative point of Instagram. It's creating the, the elitist thing that you talked about. I think there are certain people on Instagram that are elitist in what they perceive. The problem with something like Instagram is that you've got everyone, you can look at everyone in the world. Because if you go to your local gym you're sort of, and you didn't have Instagram, you'd be looking yeah. at the people around you. Whereas on Instagram, you're competing with everyone in the world and the people will put up pictures. And you've got to remember, these, these fitness models, as they're called, they don't look like that all the time. So they might have like 10 or 12% body fat and they've got a shoot coming up. They'll spend two weeks eating nothing, yeah. killing yeah. themselves. Um, it, it's, it's, it's hard work. I mean, you've got to commend them for what they do, but actually that's not what they look like yeah, but also you're not just doing it to look good in the mirror. No, exactly. And as you get older, you want to be able to move, yeah. be mobile. Yeah, it's, that's the a, that's a negative point of Instagram yeah. is that it's, it's, it's almost creating this polarised view of, of what people think they should look like. Yeah. Um, 
and there aren't anyone out there. There's no, there's no magazines out there. They're still pushing the, the topless men that look. You know, there's not 0.1% of people look like that. 0.01% of people yeah, look like that. Yeah. And that's not asp. It's, it's, it's a difference between. It's a hard, fine line between being aspirational, and being realistic. So it's a tricky one. Yeah. Um, and that's why I try and keep off Instagram looking at those types of things. The thing is, it's thing, so if you get into the CrossFit stuff, a lot of it's functional. Yeah. You know, like most people are working in offices, they're sitting down all yeah. day. Mm. Um, and so when you get in, when you get into it, actually, yeah. it's a bit more about flexibility. Yeah. Functional is a really good word to yeah. actually use it. And the word functional is, you know, you see people call functional fitness, and actually, that's what I like about CrossFit as well. Is that it's about you know, su- flexibility. You know, building subtle suppleness and rather than just lifting loads of heavy weights above your head. It's, it's not that. Whereas it, it is, it, it's creating a lifestyle change. Yeah. Rather it puts than, a lot of people off though. It does. On the, so. Looking at Instagram, Facebook. Mm. It's quite negative exactly. actually because if you're trying to lose weight, the concept of losing weight is quite interesting actually because um, like diets as well. And <laughs> I mean, I don't like the word diet. I can't, I, I say it, but I don't, the, the word diet for me is too short term. In what way? I think people see diet as a quick fix. And it really isn't. So people, these you know, there's, there's lots of types of diet. So you could be five two paleo, you know, um, keto. There's, there's hundreds, well, hundreds, but there's a lot of types of diet. All designed for me to lose weight sometimes too quickly in a short period of time. And what happens is you crash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what, yeah. And, and and what you should do is it's, it's a lifestyle change. It's, it's it's nutrition. It's teaching people habits rather than a diet. I mean, losing weight is, is quite black and white. You just have less calories than you consume. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It literally is as simple as that. People think that, oh, but if I'm taking fats on board, this is more effective at losing weight. It's not. The reason why um, the keto works to lose weight versus normal diets is because you're taking less calories. Yeah. You know, alcoholics are thin, for example. I mean, they could just drink alcohol all day and be thin, it's, yeah. but it's not healthy. No. And I don't think um, you know, Instagram doesn't have, and the media as well, they don't have to tell the truth. They, they write stuff that what people want to listen to. But also, we don't really learn it. No. We don't learn it at school. No. You don't learn it anywhere. It's well, it's interesting. My fiance's brother is 15, um, and, and I can't really remember now what we learn at school, but they're not taught what nutrition is. They're not taught to have five a day. They're not taught, you know, actually having too much fruit isn't good for you. Because yeah. people have like seven pieces of fruit a day. That's actually quite unhealthy because it's so much sugar. Yeah, yeah. It's natural sugar, but it's too much sugar. So Also taught that fat's bad for you. And fat's bad, yeah. Carbs are bad. Yeah. And it really isn't. It's about energy balance. It's about, I think it's quite easy. Someone said it to me the other day, actually, which, is, which really resonated with me, was that it's quite easy to hit your macro goal. So if you have you know, 100 grams of protein to it, that's quite easy carbohydrates, fats, it's quite easy to get those three. But what it isn't easy to do is, is your micronutrients, so your vitamins. Yeah. So like I was saying before, you could be, you could just eat, drink alcohol and lose weight, but you're not getting any micronutrients in, so. But hey, you go to school and you ask them what a macro and a micro is. Yeah. They won't know. No, and it's not just about telling them what it is. I think it's about teaching them how to cook properly, yeah. simple ways of doing it. Um, it's, it, it can't, it overcomplicates it and it's, it really is uh, a case of, I think what they should teach kids at school is, the, is, a, is a balanced diet rather than, a, I say the word diet, a, a balanced diet, for example, yeah. rather than a keto or a 5-2 or whatever. They can choose to moderate themselves in the future, but at the end of the day, you have a third of protein, a third of fat, a third of carbs, or whatever you want to do um, for a, what your body needs yeah. um, nutritionally, because... The government should be pushing it because it's going to save them a lot of money in the future. 100%. Um, it just we, confuses me, but... We went through, like, periods. You had Jamie Oliver doing his yeah, sugar, school stuff. Yeah, sugar, yeah. But um, I went to see a few schools because my kids going to school in yeah. September. And they're still serving, like, you'd say unhealthy... Yeah, no. Pizzas, burgers... Chip, chips, yeah. Chips. I think it's, it's, it's... What they need to be taught as well is that it really is a balance. So my diet, for example, I would consider myself healthy, but I would probably have a treat every day. Of something like what biscuits not every day biscuits are my uh, go-to right. like a cup of tea and biscuits something sweet um so my biggest like ch- like cheat would be or trick would be when you, a lot of people have, i have a sweet tooth so if you've eaten like a quite a high fat meal 
after it, you kind of want something sweet. So yeah. rather than having like a chocolate bar or something, have an ice lolly. They're like 50 calories, yeah. 10 grams of sugar. And you get the same like satisfaction from it. Yeah. And you, you're not having all those calories late at night. So it's... It, but you're exercising a lot though. I am exercising. I can, I can cheat a lot more than normal people. Yeah, yeah. Um, Normal just people. getting that this well, yeah. It's getting that balance of yeah. How much activity you're doing? It is, and 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 eating. some people, if you wanna, if you wanna have a Mars bar or whatever, you earn it. Like you could, yeah, you should, yeah. if you have done a lot of exercise, go and go and earn it. So it's just yeah. a balance. And they say you can have about, you know, added added sugar that's not from fruits or whatever, about thirty five grams a day. That's quite a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, yeah. It's a kind of coke, <laughs> yeah. but you know, it's, I wouldn't recommend. But if you want a can of Coke, just, just filter it into your diet, not every day, like one, have it as a treat, earn your calories, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, rather than just relying upon it, it's, it has to be a balance, because I've done it in the past, you know, I've gone on holiday, I wanna, I wanna get a good beach body or whatever, and I've done two or three days without any treats or any goodness, and yeah. you, you actually get worse and you crash. Because yeah. the more exercise you do, the hungrier you get. It's actually yeah. quite hard. Whereas if you filter it in, as long as you're hitting your micronutrients, your macronutrients, and you're not, in a calorie surplus, you'll be fine. The tough thing is it, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to eat well. Yeah. Because you pop down to the On supermarket the, yeah. and a lot of the stuff they sell, the mm. quick meals and are generally unhealthy. You know, and that's why the, if you see the rise of like um, meal prep companies, yeah. Yeah. They're, I think they're very expensive at the moment. So for the, the, the usual person, they're, they're up to 20 quid a day. Are they? Yeah. For, for three meals? For three meals and a snack, yeah. And a snack. Maybe two snacks actually. For, for yeah. me, that's too expensive. Yeah. Now I'm starting my own business. I don't pay myself a salary. I'm yeah. a minimum wage. I basically yeah. pay myself enough to live. Yeah. And you learn. You, it's quite liberating, you know, how to you cook your own meals. And yeah. it's time though. And this is. So did you not cook your own meals when you were getting a salary? No, I did. I would cheat You've more though. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hate buying meals out. I think it's yeah. such a waste of money. Same. Even going to anywhere and spend seven, eight pounds. Some people do it every day. I think you're spending 50, 60 quid a week. We spent that on food shopping, but they also work very long hours, so it's quite hard. It's, yeah, it's I, I tried, I worked with a company called Macro Mills recently. Really cool guys, based in Cheltenham. Really good meal, and they sent me a few meals, and I absolutely loved it. It was, because I, I'd so like to eat. can you eat. choose what, like, um, vegan? You can choose, yeah, normal, it's really, whatever, yeah. yeah. You can then you can pick and choose certain meals. You can say, I don't want broccoli, for example. You can say, I don't like, or oh, I want this. Yeah. Really, really good. And only six pounds a meal, actually. That's good. Really good, value for money. But I can't afford it on my current non-salary. Yeah. But if I could, I would do it straight away because right. it's giving me what I need. It's give, and all I've got to do is put it in a microwave, which for a lot of business people is, is good. Yeah, in yeah. a similar way that- It's a good way to do it. Supplement, it's a supplement almost. In a similar way that a supplement is, people say, do you need whey protein? Like we said earlier on. You don't, but if you're on the go after the gym, going back to the office, for example, having a quick shake and getting that instant hit of protein, your body needs it. Yeah. If you can go and have some eggs and an omelette afterwards, then you probably don't need it. But if, if your body needs, what you do when you exercise is you break down muscle tissue. You're literally tearing muscle tissue. And without protein, you're gonna wake up the next day and you're gonna hurt, you're gonna have DOMS. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the way that you build muscle is breaking it down and rebuilding it, breaking it down. So your body is constantly in this cyclical process of breaking down cells, rebuilding them. So. Protein is a, is a macronutrient, it's really needed in the diet. You know, if you look at brands like Weetabix are bringing out protein Weetabix now. Okay. I would actually say protein is the new fashionable macronutrient. Yeah. And yeah. for good reason, because actually a high protein diet has, can help reduce, you know, increase metabolism, sorry. Yeah. Because it requires a lot more energy to break down protein. And you, you tend to replace like fats and carbohydrates, which are higher in calories with something like protein. Yeah. Um, but it's all a balance. But um, it's, it's, it's so hard. There isn't a one size fits all. That's the thing. No, no. Even now we're talking about these prep companies. There's so many different things. It's just getting people into the right, you know, if they need to go on a better uh, diet and yeah. to come as, we're just thinking about like what's healthy, yeah. being active, mm. not sitting down all day. The, the, the tricky point is, is that you read what's in the media um, yeah. and that's not science. The media doesn't have to print science. So that's the thing is, is trying to look at who should I listen to now, who, who who's yeah. saying the right things. Yeah. So at Wade, we're partnering up with nutritionalists to you know, say, look, this is the right diet. So what we want to do on our site in the future is give people really simple diet advice and, and tips rather than diet, this is what you should do. So just like step changes, 
replacement. So rather than having a, an ice cream, have a, a, a nice lolly or something like that, as I said before. Yeah, yeah. Um, p- teach people what they should have been taught at school almost. Because it's quite simple. Eat this roughly as a diet. Yeah. Track, track it is really good. My Fitness Pal, for example. Yeah, yeah, People don't realise really how much or how little I they're eating. I use My Fitness Pal a bit. Yeah, I'll go through stages. I'm like two days on and then a month it's off. It's quite an, it's a bit of an effort. It there. is an effort, yeah. Um, it's the other, you just want something easy. You just want to know that that's good for you. Yeah, or, soon you'll be, able to, you'll be able to take a photo of a, a product and it'll tell you how much it will, I reckon. Yeah, and yeah. You, yeah. With AI, the way that the market's going. Definitely. Um, you won't have to type in the well, There's already a Google Lens on their, on their new camera. Is there? You can point at anything. If there's words there, it will bring up the website. Oh, wow, tell you that's what it incredible. Is yeah. I was at a conference a few months ago, maybe a year ago, actually, and they were saying that they, they think in five years' time, people won't use Google search w- engine. They'll just use a, um, an Alexa. Or they'll use a Google, what's Google's version? I can't remember um, what it's called now. OK Google. OK Google, yeah. So they'll say, you know, find me the best whey protein. Yeah. Or find me a diet. Or this, and they'll, they won't actually type anymore. And it's weird, people are like, that's not going to happen. But we're already starting to do it. I oh, know, we're there already. Yeah, so five years' time seems doable for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But the new SEO is getting on their list. So getting on Amazon's recommended list. So. But also, I think some brands are um, like, some big retail stores on Alexa and the other mm. Siri and so forth. You can just say, "Hey, cool customer services." Yeah, yeah. John Lewis or whatever. Yeah, no, it's just going straight through. It's yeah, it's, it is amazing. It's it's simplifying the process. Yeah. I mean, if you look at what um, Whole Foods and Amazon are doing with their, have you seen the Whole? I think it's called Amazon Go Store. Amazon Fresh. Amazon Fresh. Yeah. Oh, is it? No, there's a store in Seattle. So oh, right. I haven't seen it. Basically, because obviously Amazon have just bought. Whole Foods, yeah. like 13 billion. Yeah, crazy. Someone told me, I don't know if this is true, that their stock price, they actually basically bought Amazon uh, Whole Foods for free. So, because they're on the on the stock market, that their, their, the value of Amazon went up by more than 13 billion when they bought Whole Foods. So they effectively bought them for free, which is just crazy. And it's that's crazy. Why Amazon Jeff, are unbelievable. Yeah. Do you sell through Amazon? Yeah, 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 yeah. we do, yeah. How do you find them as a... Uh, uh, impossible. Really? So hard to work with. Getting a brand on there, this is the honest truth, is so hard. They, they mustn't have been that hard when they first started out. Um, they, take a less, they take less margin than the retailer would, and they yeah. fulfill it all for me. So it's good like that, but yeah. actually getting it on there was really hard. Once it's on there, it's fine. Yeah. Um, getting higher up the rankings is, is quite hard. Do you mean when you Google, when you uh, yeah. stick way into yeah. the search engine? So you, you can do like, they do sponsored ads in the same way that Google do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this store in, in so this Whole Foods store in, in Seattle is, you walk in and like you would on the underground, you tap in with a, an app or a card. Yeah. As you walk in, you put anything in your basket and then you just walk out. As you walk out, because it, it, it's all got a code on each or a barcode on each or something on the packet, it knows what you bought and it just charges your card. Crazy. So there's no tills. Um, and that is such a, a black and white concept that will be, so I reckon in a few years time, there won't be checkouts. That's so dangerous. But the only thing, you so you can't steal anything. Because yeah, you, just, you just whack it all in your uh, Yeah, I know, right? I don't know if you, go. maybe you can scan it so you've got a, a running total. But You'll just get a message on your phone saying how much <laughs> yeah, you spent exactly. afterwards. You're like, just spent a thousand pounds, which you could easily do in Whole Foods. Um, but I think this, the supermarkets will go this way, for sure. Um, Definitely, yeah. Because the obviously theft will be zero. But unfortunately, it's, it's another example that technology is making workforces you know, one machine that could replace 15 people at a checkout. Yeah, but they do say that all technology will create other jobs. So yeah. it'll be interesting to Hopefully. see how that will develop. You're going you to need customer service. The only thing I was thinking with those stores is that you could just go in and eat the food in the store, leave the packaging in there and walk out. That's yeah, but the, you'll have cameras all over. Yeah, that, I mean, I wouldn't recommend they'll, it. They'll, they'll be reading your facial yeah. expressions. Because the, the, the people at lunch, people don't, in cities, you go to New York, you go to, you're in London, people don't have time. Time is money. Yeah. And that's why delivery is so popular. Even though you're paying more for a, a, probably a worse service, food yeah. turns up cold. Convenience, yeah. Uber, um, it's just convenience led brands. Ocado have been doing great. Yeah, exactly. As well, I mean. So it's if you can, you know, convenience is, is the power at the moment. Single serving sachets, those sorts of things, giving it people to people on a plate, um, walking out of the store without having to go to the checkout. I mean, I love that concept. I'd love to be able to do that because no one likes queuing up. Take a picture. Tell Take me what the nutritional value exactly. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me their Instagram yeah. page. Ordering a your child ordering a, a DVD on Amazon Alexa. 
you know, accidentally. Like a million, a million turn up. Yeah, I accidentally did that, nearly did it the other day, actually, because we've got an Alexa, um, Amazon Echo. We've got it free with my health insurance. Um, and I can't remember what I asked it or something, and it was like, do you want to purchase this product? I was like, no, no. But uh, luckily it didn't. But it's literally yes or no. If I accidentally said yes at the end, it would have been added to my Amazon account through the Prime, and it would have been sent the next day. Um, but then with the connected homes now, mm. so you've got uh, Amazon have just bought some alarm or one of the ring doorbells. I've seen this, yeah. Um, so the Amazon guy can come. Mm. It can ring on your doorbell. You'll see the video. Um, with your smart smart lock, you yeah. can open the front door. They can come in and come in. in your yeah, phone, yeah. All on camera. Mm. And then... That is, it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, the drones they're doing now. The drones, yeah. Drones they are. were saying, I was reading on their site, I was reading on an article about, you know, you can order, you could be having a barbecue. You run out of beer. You order it within an hour. You got a six pack of beer turning up on a drone. Crazy. I mean, you know, Amazon Alexa and the, so a lot of that stuff is actually done in in Cambridge. Or oh, the development. Yeah. So right. the, the, uh, which is quite cool that it's in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that, I mean, they're they're head and shoulders above the rest. Um, if Amazon are doing it, if Google are doing it, if Apple is doing it, you know that's the trend because these are the three the, biggest companies in the world. Yeah, and then you've got. Uh, and then you've got Facebook and uh, Microsoft. Yeah, and trying to catch up as well. Uh, interestingly, I don't really know what's gonna happen with Facebook in years to come. I mean, also they own Instagram, so they're fine. And WhatsApp. And WhatsApp, yeah. They're not uh, doing too badly. So from a Facebook point of view, I think now with all the, the GDPR and the data they can no longer use yeah. um, to a certain degree. Um, we just need their permission now, but yeah. our permission. Yeah, that's interesting, but we'll see. I think what they've actually, a lot of the adverts, they've, come, they've kind of gone back to what Facebook was originally, like friends, birthdays, yeah. sharing. I think that's what they're trying to push a little bit more. But there's, Be interesting to see. there's still more people on Facebook than there is any other social media platform. So It's great. By what, WhatsApp, I mean, everyone uses WhatsApp. Did you remember MSN Messenger? Yeah. 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 I don't know how old I was when that first came out. Back in the day. But that was when the screen used to shake. <laughs> Hotmail. But then I was a reader, I was listening to a, a TED talk, and mm. it was about 588 million internet users in China, which is about 38% or whatever of the population. Wow. So we're talking about like the West, but yeah. mm. you know, Alibaba thinks Bing is an Am bigger than Amazon. Yeah, is There's it? Other wow. bigger companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they have I mean, certain laws over there, don't they? They don't have Facebook in China, do they? No. No. They don't have Facebook, no. But they do have like, so they've got WeChat. Okay. Which I think, I think Wee's part of Alibaba. I'm mm. not sure. Yeah. Um, so they've got like state censored really, wow. stuff, but the market yeah. out there is unbelievable. Yeah, I can imagine. It's... It's a lot of, obviously, a lot of firms want to tap into that market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at Amazon, they've, obviously, they're only just going over to Australia now. Are they? Yeah, so, and that, it's, it's kind of forgotten about Australia down there, and down under, but it's such a, from a fitness point of view, I mean, for me in the future, I'd love to take Wade over there. To Australia? Yeah, because they're, it's a higher income area, generally, and because it's sunny all the time, the fitness element of it, outside, people are more conscious of what they look like, so it's actually... They're obsessed with fitness cafes <laughs> and this, that, and the other. So, um, we need to Africa too. All the population growth is in Africa. Is it? Yeah. Mm. They've got a young, motivated workforce. Most mm. people are like early twenties. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard it there. I, I watched a documentary recently, actually, on Africa, on Ethiopia, actually, saying that thirty-five percent of the population is under twenty or something. Or? Yeah, I and mean, it's amazing. Yeah. And obviously, if you're into long-distance running, yeah, <laughs> like, Africa's the place. Yeah, it's where it was born, almost, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I think I think more people are will be going to Africa on on holidays and stuff. Yeah, my fiance is doing a tour of Africa in January. So yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. Uh, well, I think we've done over an hour. So have we? Wow. Well, yeah, I think so. Thank you very much for right. uh, That's amazing. for <laughs> chatting. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, so look out for your product on on our website so www.way.com or Instagram or Amazon. And all the supermarkets soon. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see. Um, that's the goal. A lot of gyms and yeah. Jerome CrossFit is, uh, is the yeah. current one. So, cool. yeah. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Lewis. Bye. Yeah. See ya. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Mm -hmm.